Good afternoon, Mark Redmond, Executive Director of Spectrum. Thank you so much for joining us today. You must be Thank so you, Lauren Glenn. It's great to be with you as always. So are you all working remotely or what's happening? Is Spectrum open for business? So we're open for business. It's interesting. You know, everybody knows us for our work with homeless youth, and we'll talk about that. But we probably work with 20 times more youth and families who are not homeless, but who are struggling with either these are kids who are in the foster care system or leaving the foster care system, suffer from addiction or mental health issues. So we have staff working in schools, in the community, counseling all over. So they're all remote, you know. Um, I've ordered everyone out of our building and uh, everybody has a laptop and they have a Zoom account and they're able to do teletherapy that way and work with children and families that way. So I'm really happy. We pretty moved into action pretty quickly. Now, that being said, right, we have a drop-in center that's open every day where young people, many of whom are homeless, come and get a free hot lunch, free hot dinner, take a shower, do their laundry, you know, use the computers. And unfortunately, as of yesterday, we had to, we just, it was just too risky, you know? So now our staff are giving kids, if they come there at noon or at 5 p.m., we're giving them meals, you know, that they can eat out the door. So, and then, as you know, we have 16 homeless youth living in our building in Pearl Street. Oh. And Bishop Coyne lets us use St. Joseph Co-Cathedral Parish Hall every winter. So I have about seven more kids in there. So, you know, those staff can't work remotely, right? Right. They've got to be in there with those kids. So those are the staff who to me are really heroic. They're like first responders in a way, right? Yeah. And they're in there and they're helping those kids. And um, I really admire, unfortunately, none of them, our staff have gotten sick, which is good, but we're putting a list together, a volunteer list of people who we can call upon. And I'm one of them to, uh, to fill in if we really get desperate. So you've had to make some real contingency plans. Did you feel your organization was up to able to make these decisions quickly and execute them? How did you feel organizationally this is working? So it's so interesting. I mean, we have a safety committee that meets monthly anyway about all kinds of safety issues. And then once this virus hit, we kind of morphed into that. And it's amazing how rapidly, I think it was only two Mondays ago, I was saying to people, what do you think? Should we tell people to work from home? And everybody was like, no, we're not there yet. And we met maybe three days later and we were there. You know, it, this has happened so rapidly, right? The NBA got canceled, March Madness got one thing after the other. And that's when we began to realize, wow. So luckily we have a really talented team of people and uh, everybody put contingency plans in place pretty quickly, you know? So I was, that's even, we're small, right? We have about 60 employees. Howard Center's got over a thousand. So, you know, we were able to really mobilize pretty quickly and get things in place for our, our staff and our kids, which was good. And you mentioned Howard Center, you work in partnership with a lot of organizations. How has that response been? Your ability to leverage collective resources? So that's a good question. Once we saw this thing coming at us, I'm very tied with Rita Markley and Trisha Coates is the acting director at Lund, right? Then you have a new place, which one's the warming shelters. So we started communicating first by phone call and then we have, now we have an every other day um, Zoom session and it's expanded. So it's still Cots and Lund and Howard Center and United Way and CETO, Mike Monty from Champlain Housing Trust is part of that. Somebody from the state is part of that. Somebody from the hospital, so quickly we're mobilizing more and more people. And really, now here's the thing we're really working on, Lauren Glenn. This is what scares me. What if one of the young people staying with us shows symptoms, right? And we send them to the primary care provider, which is community health center. And they say, oops, this person needs to go up to the hospital. And then they are seen at the hospital, but the hospital either doesn't have room or the person isn't, isn't in that range of who they're looking to really keep, right? And they send them back to us. What do we do? And Lund faces that, a new place faces that, COTS, we all face that. So I've been saying to the state for the last 10 days, and I'm, we're helping them, somebody's gotta find a site somewhere separate, right? 
where, where people who don't have a home that they can be quarantined to can go. So the state, they're telling me by tomorrow, they're supposed to let us know, they're gonna look for five sites. They're calling them congregate, no, a regional recovery centers, congregate regional recovery centers where people can go. And they're looking for one, obviously, for Chittenden County. So one person has been calling the colleges. I don't know if that's going to fly because those kids aren't going back to those dorms anytime soon. We're looking at any kind of abandoned building. I've called Bishop Coyne about the Immaculate Conception Cathedral. You know, we're really pulling out all the stops because I believe that's what we need now. We need a, a, a building, a site where people can go who don't have a home to go to. On the fort, up at the, the fort, those buildings were all St. Michael's dormitories. And they have, they're sitting there. In fact, we were thinking of buying one about a year ago. Perspective, we didn't follow through. But I've been through those buildings. That would be another possible site. So you're right. So we've, we've got to scramble. And I have to give the state high marks for their ability to really move quickly. We've got to find a site. Because that is my biggest fear. And I'll tell you, I think cots in a new place are even more of a, a bind because their population is a lot older, older than 60, people whose immune systems are already compromised, people who've been smokers, that's the target group. That's the group that's most likely to get this virus. In a way, unfortunate, we deal with 18, 19, 20 year olds. They could get it, but they're less likely to get it. So the markets in the really have taken a hit and it makes me think about fundraising and what kind of response you've had. And do you think there'll be a kind of short-term bump and then a long-term, oh my gosh, none of us have any money to give? Yeah, we're really concerned. You know, Spectrum now, this is my 17th year. When I got there the first year, we raised $49,000 in donations. Last year, we raised $2 million in donations. And this year, we have to raise 2.1. And a big part of that is the sleep out. We, we're supposed to do the sleep out next Thursday night, that usually raises over $300,000. We can't do sleep out this year. We can't have 100 people in the basement of the UU church and 100 people sleeping out on that lawn. So we've told people, do it remotely. So I'm gonna do it in my backyard. Everybody's gonna do it in their backyard. We're gonna put up a, a live feed on Facebook, you know, so. And then there's the kids ones. We have hundreds of kids doing them. They can't do it either, so. Hopefully people will still be able to do it. I don't know if it's going to raise and then, but you raise a good question, right? How much, you know, what well, looks like we're sliding into, into recession and, you know, are people going to have the funds to, to give to us? I think we have a very good case to make that now is when we need to be stand with homeless kids more than ever, right? They were always behind the eight ball with great obstacles in front of them. Now more than ever, we need spectrum in our supporters. So we'll see how that pans out, you know, but a lot of nonprofits are in this, are in the same, they're all in the same uh, bucket. Are you getting enough rest yourself? I am. <laughs> I woke up at 3 a.m. this morning for some reason <laughs> and I did some work and then I went back to sleep. So I feel pretty, I, I feel really good. You know, I love to go to the gym and go to spinning classes and swim. So I'm really missing the edge right now. But it's starting to warm up, and we can all exercise outdoors, right? We can, we can do that. Isn't so, that yeah, so I, you know, my wife, Mary Beth, is in the legislature, as you know. I know you've interviewed her, and she's been on your, your studio. So she is, of course, they gave them off, well, off, I, off this week. She's on a call right now. I mean, just because they're off, she and the rest of the legislators are really working time on this thing. This thing and she's on the Human Services Committee. So this is hitting them straight, you know? So, but we're, tr we're trying to relax as much as, as we can. Our son is relaxing. He doesn't have school. <laughs> He's doing okay. So do you watch Netflix or Prime? Yeah, I love Netflix. Any recommendations? Well, I wondered what the last thing you saw was. Oh my gosh, what did we watch? We watched last night. We have a long list of things we wanna watch, right? <laughs> So we watched last night Amazing Grace, which is a documentary about Aretha Franklin, right? It's it was great. at the Roxy, and now it's on Hulu. So we watched that, and that's such a beautiful, it was a 1972 concert she did. And uh, Sidney Pollack, was the, he recorded it, and it's, it's, we're about halfway through it. 
And uh, we saw Motherless Brooklyn the night before that, which Edward Norton, it was a great movie. I love that. But you're working, people on Facebook are all like, name you, I wrote down like 20 different series, <laughs> Killing Eve, The Outsiders. <laughs> I'm writing them all down. Yeah, you got to, because you got to put them in the watch list. That's it. That's I get right. that watch list up to date. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you had some time to relax and thanks for your time now and all the work that you've done leading the community as a coalition builder and a, a public servant. I mean, really, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for what you're doing. Communication and what you're doing is what's going to get us through all this. We all work together and you're a piece of that too. And I'm grateful to you and your studio. So thanks for having me on today. I appreciate it. I'll look for it. Okay. All right, Mark Redman. Thank you.